Another scripture. Let me quickly read this. Luke chapter 1. The story of Zacharias, the father of John the Baptist. You know, we have not really given thought to this story. Let me read it from verse 5. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abia, and his wife was the daughter of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. Now, when, when, when the Bible talks of a man and his wife walking blameless before God, you should, should tell the quality of purity of life that they lived. Verse 7. And they had no child because that Elizabeth was barren and they were now well stricken in age. The, the Greek word for stricken there means to go ahead or to advance. So it means that he's, he's telling you, he's painting these pictures so that you know how old they were. As I was reading it, now, some of you were seeing pictures of an old man and old woman. And so the Bible tells us that these two, this couple, this man and his wife, Zacharias and his wife Elizabeth were advanced in age and they had no child. The reason for that emphasis is to tell you that at this time in their life, it was naturally impossible for them to have children. Just like the children of Israel had to face Jericho, a city that was walled round, several feet wide, the wall several feet wide, that it was impossible for them to penetrate. But Joshua told them, we are walking around seven days, the first six days once, the seven days, seven times, and at the end of the walk, we will shout, this wall will fall. But in these seven days, don't utter a word until I ask you, And so it was impossible for them, but they did that, kept quiet, silenced all the doubts in their minds, all the enlightened people, all those who knew everything, knew everything about life, who, who, who knew that natural is not possible. He told everybody, this matter is a matter of keeping quiet. When I ask you to shout, then you will shout and you will see the victory. Hallelujah. And so that issue is in your life. It looks insurmountable. You will see the victory. Some of you, before the end of this year, you will see that victory in the name of Jesus. And so for Zechariah and his wife Elizabeth, impossible for them to have a child. When the angel Gabriel came to Zechariah while he was fulfilling his, his priestly ministry, his role that day was to burn incense before the entrance of the Holy of Holies in the temple. The incense symbolized answers to prayers in the Old Testament. Hallelujah. We don't need to burn incense today as some do because Jesus is our incense, is our answers to prayers. I should have said amen to that. Now it tells us that in him, all the promises of scriptures, they are yes and they are amen, is your answer to prayers, is your incense. The sweet smelling aroma ever before the presence of the Father. Glory to God. Your prayers are answered. Amen. But why was we that Gabriel, the angel of the Lord, appeared to him and told him, listen, your wife is going to get pregnant and he will have a child. Verse 12. Let me start from verse 12. And when Zechariah saw him, that is the angel Gabriel, he was troubled and fear came upon him. 
But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. And the angel tells him that your prayers has been heard. So in other words, those prayers he has been praying when he was still maybe in his early 20s when he married and on and on until after the wife had entered into menopause and then still struggling to pray the doubts were there in his mind listen it's not going to happen because your wife is now uh have, have crossed into menopause and so it's no longer possible for her to get pregnant and then uh, and he, he was the doubts were still there in his mind so maybe at the time in his life he was no longer praying for it but yet the angel said your prayers has been heard <laughs> listen there's no prayer that you have ever prayed that God did not hear you didn't hear me there's no prayer you have ever prayed that God did not hear maybe what you just need to do is to apply this teaching silence the unbelief in your mind by not speaking the doubts going on in your mind.